Hi, my name is Emil Onabia and I'm an artist and a liner cut printmaker. Today I'd like to share with you a behind the scenes vlog, a vlog that I usually only share with my Patreon supporters. I put out these vlogs once or twice per month and I talk about my process, what I'm currently working on, behind the scenes stuff, things I'm thinking about and, and so on. Other perks of being a Patreon supporter include a monthly live stream, early access to new releases, ad-free videos, plus many more benefits. Uh, I hope one day to be able to live of making art and Patreon is a way for me to work towards that dream. So if you like what I do and would like to support me, you can head on over to Patreon and there's a link to it in the description. Now back to the video. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Patreon vlog. Uh, today I'd like to show you the process of making the liner cut tabletop I've been talking about for a while now. Um, it's been a really, really interesting project to work on and uh, I've learned a lot of new things. And I think the end product looks so good I can, I can hardly believe how well it's turned out. So we pick up where the last Alchemy video left off. After I had printed the edition I got to work on cleaning the linoleum. Uh, because I use Cranfield Safe Wash Relief Ink, even though it's an oil-based ink, I can just clean it with soap and water. I started by rubbing the whole surface with soap and I'm just using some organic liquid laundry detergent, as it doesn't foam as much as say a dish detergent does. And it works just as well. After I'd gone over the whole surface with the soap, I rinsed it off with water in my bathtub. This was a bit difficult to handle, but it would have been a huge mess to do it in my studio. And when I was certain the ink was washed off, I just let it to dry. Then once it was dry, I proceeded to spray paint the whole thing. My friend who commissioned the table and I were talking about what color it should be. And originally we had planned to apply a layer of black ink over this white paint uh, to make it look like the prints that I pulled earlier. In the end, uh, we decided not to do that and just leave it white. This way the tabletop is a bit more subtle, but once you get up close, you can really see all the details. And it took a lot of spray paint. I think I used a whole can uh, to make sure that all the nooks and crannies were painted. After the paint was dry, I glued the lino onto a piece of plywood, uh, which wasn't totally flat and neither is my table. So I had to use the door from my studio as a flat surface that I could clamp the lino and plywood on, uh, which was a bit of a hassle, but worked out in the end.
Once I had applied the glue to the whole surface, I flipped the piece, aligned it with the plywood and used my roller that I normally apply ink with to flatten it. Then I placed a towel to protect the surface and another sheet of plywood on top. And then I could place some pieces of wood to clamp the whole thing together. Now I went in with some white acrylic and a paintbrush just to fix all the little holes in the lino that I couldn't get to with the spray paint. And I just used some paper towel to remove the excess paint. Off camera I put together a frame for the resin pour. It's basically just a flat bottom with four sides. And all the seams were hot glued and taped to avoid any leaks. And now it's time to pour the resin. I had done just one test pour on a small piece of lino just to see how it works, but it was still a completely different experience at this scale. Oscar, my friend who commissioned the table, uh, came to help with the pour. I needed an extra set of hands in case something went wrong. I was really nervous that I had forgotten something or that the seams were leaky, uh, but luckily everything worked out perfectly. Now, to get rid of as many bubbles as we could, we used a small torch to burn them off. This worked great and left the resin really nice and clear. In the end, there were only like three or four bubbles we missed and you don't notice them at all. This was really hard to film as the surface was so shiny. It was difficult getting the camera to focus correctly. Then we just had to wait for the resin to dry and we put some paper over it just to avoid any dust to fall on the surface while it was drying. After 48 hours the resin had hardened and here's a first look at it while it's still in the frame. Now I could remove the frame, which was a bit of a process as some part of it had bonded with the resin, even though the tape was supposed to prevent that. But I got the sides off in the end. Now I could flip the whole thing over and remove the screws that were holding the plywood to the base of the frame.
and then it was time to finish the sides of the table. I didn't record most of this process as it was rather noisy. Sorry neighbors. Uh, I used a router to get it down to the final dimensions and I also put a round edge on the top resin surface to make it smooth and stronger. Then all there was left to do was to sand the edges and then I could deliver the table to its new home. And here it is. I'm really pleased with how it turned out and I hope you like it as well. It's been so much fun working on this project. I want to say thank you to Oscar for trusting me uh, and for his patience especially since I didn't have any prior experience in making this sort of thing and I've now spent more than a year working on this from when we first came up with the idea. And I want to say thank you to you patrons as well for supporting me and believing in me and my work. I really hope you like this video and I hope you have a nice day. See you!